Now, you may or may not have noticed, but we've just run two back-to-back -back reports on issues affecting disabled people. It shouldn't, of course, be unusual to be highlighting experiences affecting any group, especially the disabled community. Uh, but it is. You may not know, 22% uh, of the UK population has a disability, which is why today Five News is making sure 22% of the programme is about matters facing disabled people. And as part of that, Dan spoke to the Minister for Disabled People, Tom Persglove, and asked him what he was doing to tackle that under-representation. Crucially, does the government's new disability action plan go far enough? So what we're announcing today as government is that we are going to deliver a new disability action plan next year, pulling together a number of projects that are all designed to try and improve the lives and opportunities available to disabled people working across government with the idea of making quick progress to try and deliver some important quick wins that will just help to improve matters. Whenever we cover an issue like this, we have a lot of uh, disabled viewers who say they lost faith in the government when uh, the, the payment, the cost of living payment was only £150. How can they trust you that this will work and this will happen and be followed through on? I'm under no illusions about how tough it is at the moment, and particularly for disabled people, but there are these wider cost of living payments. There is, of course, the energy price guarantee, which is helping considerably with people's energy bills. There's the disability cost of living payment that you've touched on. And of course, in general terms, they're uprating benefits in line with inflation, which is the right thing to do to help with those pressures. But of course, we have to keep that under constant review. And you talked about um, those benefits being in line with inflation. That, that's got to be in place for, for many disabled viewers, many people watching this programme who cannot cope at the moment. I would encourage people, if they think that there is a particular concern or a problem or a challenge that they're experiencing to get in touch with their local authority to try and access the Household Support Fund, which is there precisely to help with where those challenges are acute and pressing in a particular case. Um, that discretion is there to be able to help meet those needs. One of the reports we looked at earlier was uh, looking at the statistic that half of families with disabled children have accessibility problems for their local playgrounds. If you're trying to get people out and about, surely that's a really easy way of, of helping those who are struggling already, but also encouraging them to, to use those facilities. But they can't use them for various practical reasons. I think getting out there and being active is really important, and particularly for children and young people, that is crucial. Every public body has their equality duties upon them and they have to meet those duties and it's right and proper that where there are challenges and barriers to accessibility, those need to be overcome and they need to be overcome quickly. We've also seen the charity that have begun this campaign to show the importance of red cords in disabled toilets. Some are too short, some are cut off. If there's a disabled person on the floor, they can't reach it. Mm. I mean, how can you help with, with a, a really important but quite a focused campaign like that? So I'd be delighted to meet the charity to understand more about the campaigning that they're doing. And one of the great things about my role is that it's a cross-government role. So as well as being a minister in the Department for Work and Pensions, I'm also responsible for coordinating disability champions in each of the Whitehall departments. And so I would be very keen to take that campaign to my colleagues in government to ask what more we can do. Okay, that charity is called Ewan's Guide, so we'll put you in contact Fantastic. with Fantastic. I'd be delighted. And uh, I know also earlier this week you've been meeting with some uh, Paralympians from Team GB. Who is that you've been meeting with and what is the purpose of that and what can they feed into this campaign, this funding? So I met Susanna and Grace at the Olympic Park um, earlier in the week and it was brilliant to meet them because they are inspirational and their achievements, I think, just demonstrate the enormous breadth of achievement that we see from disabled people across our society. And so the inspiration from that actually really speaks to what we're trying to achieve with the action plan, thinking about what targeted work, what projects we can um, look to deliver in short order to try and improve opportunities and to try and improve um, opportunities more generally across society for disabled people. One other issue is attitude. Um, I spent quite a bit of time recently with Martin Hibbert, who lost use of his legs in the Manchester Arena bomb, and he's now in a wheelchair. And what he always says, um, through his own experience and speaking to other people who are disabled, is that it's not the injuries that make him disabled, it's people's attitudes to him that make him feel disabled. What can we do about that attitude change in society more broadly towards disabled people, do you think? I think we need to talk more about that. I think we need to talk more but about... He, he is talking. I mean, he regularly says he goes into a, a, sh a shop and he's told the menswear is upstairs and there's no lift. He goes to work and he can't fit his wheelchair in the lift to get into work and when he's there he can't fit it underneath the desk. It's, mm. it's tiny things like that. And so the social model of disability is very much about 
lowering those barriers, getting rid of those barriers, overcoming those very difficulties. And I think that is a mission that I am determined to help progress in this role, looking at what specific things we could do in short order to try and improve that. And Martin's exactly the sort of person who I'd be keen to talk to about his ideas and suggestions about where we should be focusing our effort to make the biggest impact as quickly as possible. OK, you're going to be a busy man. Thank you very much for spending a bit of time with us. Thank you.